Hello everyone, welcome to Anointed Lady TV, the home of news and politics. If it is your first time in this channel, you are highly welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. And if you like what we do on this channel, hit on the subscribe button. Also put on the notification bell so you'll be notified by YouTube anytime we drop a new video. And if you are returning subscribers, thank you very much for always coming back to watch our videos. On this platform, we drop videos every day and we react to every video that come our way. And on this very video, I will be watching with you. And after watching, let's go to the comment section and drop our opinion constructively. Like our videos and also share our videos if possible. See you next time in my next video. is so humble that he can serve even a child of 10 years and the child will be satisfied. We need a servant leader that will take us away from the dwindling and shackles of this economic situation we are facing. We are not going there, we are not running presidency. Anybody who told you that people are running for presidency, the person is lying. We have made up our mind that Nigeria needs a Nigerian president, not an equal president. Majesty, it is important you talk because your speech is going along with him. And he always extends his greetings also during times of uh, uh, festivities and rejoices with you, your royal highness. Again, I've been an example of somebody who has worked under him, I've seen his leadership style, we've known the impact of many of these programs that he has championed in the country. And again, it has trickled down to the grassroots level across the country in many states. I, I again uh, uh, just want to add to what my senior colleague here also said, that with your support and support of our royal highness and royal fathers across the country, we know that this our dream will be achieved. We are rooting for humility, we are rooting for competence, we are, we are rooting for economic emancipation, we are, we are rooting for uh, 
better foreign relations. We are rooting for better education. We are rooting for youth and women empowerment. We are rooting for a society where you and I can be proud to call ourselves Nigerians. And we want a Nigerian president. We are not interested in who, uh, we're not interested in where anybody is coming from, but we're looking at the competence, the ability to deliver. If you can recall your mind back, in, uh, when our president, Muhammad Buhari, went on treatment uh, abroad sometime, he formally handed over to Sibanjo. Within that six months, Nigerians had a, a, a breath of fresh air. And people were so happy because uh, he brought in policies within that uh, uh, 120 days, uh, you know, of what actually we could feel like we have a president. And a lot of things happened and people were happy. But suddenly, such a policy has not called again. And at this time, we, the National Coalition Group, are asking him to come, to come and throw his hat into the ring. Because this kind of person is the person that can salvage the situation we are facing today. You and I understand what is happening in the country. And it takes only one who is refined, humble, and someone who has a pedigree. Somebody who, could, who, who you could trust to a foundation to do the right footing and get Nigeria moving. And that is why we want to see Banjo. There is no singular clash. A father and a son can be in the same boat. But what is the matter is that when you give birth to a son, you don't allow your son to go down. Your son should grow higher than you. That's what every African prays for. So it is incumbent on uh, Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunumbu to throw in the tower and allow uh, Osibanjo to man the saddle as the next Nigerian president. Because we are looking at agility, we are looking at capacity, we are looking at several factors beyond being a national leader of the party. There are a lot of things that counts for any Nigerian now to become president. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my fathers, I greet you all. My brothers and sisters. Um, first of all, I want to follow the path of um, Joy, I think, where she introduced um, herself. I want to say that I am of mixed parentage. My mother is British. My father is an Ijom man from the Niger Delta, which is in Nigeria, in that order. Um, therefore, I align myself with my father. Um, I am honored enough to be able to say that I remember pre-independence. I also remember the Biafran War, and I also very much remember the Niger Delta agitation, and we're now in the Boko Haram uh, agitation. Um, I want to stand on the first um, national anthem, which is really where my heart is. And there is one particular line that I hold on to. And it says, though tongues and tribes may differ, in brotherhood we stand. That is the Nigeria that I know. That is the Nigeria that I continue to belong to. That is the Nigeria that I respect. That is the Nigeria that I hope will stay together. But I am also not going to misinform anyone. I will not and do not intend to sacrifice who I am, which is an Ijo person, and my region, which is Niger Delta, for the sake of Nigeria. Because nobody else is prepared to sacrifice their region for my people. We all, together, must form and rebuild a Nigeria that is equal, irrespect of number of where you come from. I do not want to deceive myself, and I will not be deceived, to think that because I am a Nigerian, that therefore I will deny my ethnicity. We are different people that make up this country, and we should be proud of that difference, and we should enhance that difference. And not use that difference to manipulate others. Alabo here has said what happened during the Niger Delta crisis. I want to be on record to say, and I have said it before, that what Nigeria is calling today peace in the Niger Delta is a peace that belongs to full. I am, I am not part of that. 
Because if nothing changes, we will go back and find ourselves in the same position where the output of oil was reduced to 700,000 barrels. The late Yaradua did not resolve or attempt to resolve the Niger Delta crisis because of his love for Niger Delta people. He resolved it because Nigeria needs the oil that is coming from the Niger Delta. We must put together a Nigeria that brings together all the resources that belongs to all Nigerians from all the 36 states. I am highly offended, my elders, when I hear people say our oil. How is the devastation not our devastation? How is the pollution of our land not our pollution? How is the killing of my people not our killing? And we're told that it is one Nigeria. We want it to be one Nigeria. I want it to be one Nigeria. My father, as I said, is a Nigerian. But I will not sacrifice my people for the sake of Nigeria. There is resources in every single state that is in this country. And therefore, it is about time that we sit down and bring everything to the table. I am highly offended by the comment of Sanusi that people are killing their fellow human beings because of derivation. If we're sharing derivation, what is it that they, he Sanusi, what is in his state? What is he bringing to Nigeria? Nine states, including Lagos, because it is the commercial heart of Nigeria, is contributing to the wealth and distribution of wealth of this Nigeria. I therefore say again that 27 states in this country and their governors are lazy. They should look for what to do, how to develop their state, how to invest in their state. Let everybody bring what they have. Let all of us share it. I thank you. Yes, thank you.